Everybody knows what stress is. Nobody knows how to define it. By thinking in terms of uh, integrative physiology, there's a pretty straightforward definition of stress that comes about. What, is, uh, what does stress have to do with the autonomic nervous system? Well, we already talked about the SOTA case, so we know there's some relationship between distress and adrenaline. One nice advantage of the integrative physiological approach is you can define stress. It's not easy to define stress uh, uh, without being completely circular. You know, uh, stress, that's what causes stress. How do you know there was stress? Because there's, look at what happened. Well, what if there wasn't stress? Well, then that wouldn't happen. Well, if it didn't happen, why didn't it happen? Because there wasn't any stress and so forth, circular. But uh, with an integrative physiological uh, approach, there's a way to define stress. It's not hard. Stress is a condition. It's a condition where there's a discrepancy between the information that's coming to the homeostat and the set point. And when the discrepancy drives an effect, uh, that's stress. Uh, this is uh, uh, a really uh, key uh, for uh, for understanding uh, the blood pressure changes that occur during, during stress. Uh, I think because of higher centers, uh, such as in the hypothalamus, uh, being, having altered activity, the, relationship, the, the baroset, barostat basically gets reset. And so for a given, for a given blood pressure, the, the, uh, the uh, sorry, for, for a given, uh, there's a resetting, a resetting. You're going to a different curve. So the blood pressure is higher, the heart rate is higher. Uh, ordinarily, because of the barrel reflex, if the blood pressure goes up, the heart rate goes down, but not during distress. So this is, uh, 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 this is uh, what I think happens, uh, for instance, uh, in people who faint. Now remember, Cannon taught that the the uh, the uh, the uh, sympathetic sympathoadrenal system functions as an emergency uh, system to maintain homeostasis, and it's not correct. And there are examples where the sympathetic noradrenergic system activity is going one way and sympathetic adrenergic system activity is going another way, or at least there's a difference uh, in the activation of the two systems. So, for instance, we just talked about distress. Distress mainly involves adrenomedullary activation, and whether sympathetic noradrenergic activation uh, uh, occurs kind of depends on which, which part of the, which, which target or, organ you're looking at. When people when people people faint, there's a phenomenon that I described a long time ago now called sympathoadrenal imbalance. It just means that the increase in adrenaline is greater than the increase in uh, in norepinephrine. Uh, suppose you uh, suppose you go out in the cold. You have goosebumps and so forth. You turn pale. Uh, that's from sympathetic noradrenergic system activation. What happens to adrenaline when you go out in the cold? Nothing, really. Uh, this is an example of selective sympathetic noradrenergic act system activation. Um, so there, you, can, you can have sympath uh, differential sympathetic noradrenergic and adrenergic responses. What that means is it's not correct to just say that in stress you get your catecholamines pumping. Oh, this, uh, this, this is a direct illustration uh, uh, from Cannon's work uh, that explains the SOTA story. Remember the, uh, the blood of the cat that was exposed to a barking dog? Uh, he called it here uh, application of excited blood. And these are spontaneous contractions, uh, gastrointestinal strip contract contractions, and you can see that uh, the uh, application of the excited blood uh, 
where is that? B here, right here, and F there, eliminated those contractions. So that was the first demonstration of distress-induced adrenaline uh, release by this bioassay. Nowadays, uh, you can measure stress by measuring your skin temperature, right? You have these stress test cards, for instance. It's really measuring the skin temperature. Uh, adrenaline is very potent at constricting blood vessels in the skin. I think that's why people turn pale when they, when they are going to faint. When, they, uh, when the blood vessels are constricted, then uh, there isn't that much warm blood that's making it to the skin surface. So the temperature of the skin begins to approach that of the room temperature, which is usually much lower. And that's the basis for the stress test card. Thank you.